They fill the streets this time of year, offering glimpses of gifts to come, and maybe some bragging rights too. So much thought is focused on what's inside them that we might neglect the humble shopping bag itself. That's hardly the case on New York City's Lexington Avenue, home to Bloomingdale's. You looked at these old bags and, and you created kind of a, a new story. Where larger than life bags are celebrated in holiday windows. As you rank all of the different things you think about in the store, where do bags rank? They're high. Bloomingdale's executive Jack Kruska says shopping bags are part of the company's DNA. It's a history. It's a history we've had for 50 years of creating shopping bags for all kinds of different occasions. At one time, it was just a, a convenience for a customer. And then in the 80s, we started to make it a much more of a collectible art piece. You don't have to tell that to Howard Foreman. They had these iconic bags that everybody was collecting. Including Foreman, who has over a hundred of them from Bloomingdale's alone. Give, Give hope. hope, this looks like a holiday one. Yes. Bags decorate his entire suburban Washington home. Holiday bags are over. And Other just style. look at the garage. Fine arts, plain bags, unique bags, vintage bags. Converted into a sort of storeroom, it houses most of the 7,000 bags he's collected. This bag was, had a cheeseburger in it was autographed by Elvis Presley. This bag contained a 45 RPM record. It was autographed by all four Beatles. There are even books about cooking with bags. And do the initials A.W. mean anything? How about now? Andy Warhol. You wouldn't bring that bag to the grocery store? No. There's a Roy Lichtenstein, too. This one was three or $4,000. How much money do you think you've spent in bags? A few hundred thousand dollars total. Wow. And yeah, wow. When dinner, Foreman sold his wholesale liquor said, business for I more than $100 million, dollars, Girl Scouts, aquarium bags, he had both resources and time. Collecting bags had always been his wife's passion, but when she passed away from cancer, he continued collecting in her memory. They even started a museum of bags. After all, there's a rich history. This bag was patented by Walter Dubner in 1919 at first grocery bag with handles. He had a grocery store in the Midwest. He found that his customers were struggling, so he developed one with the handles. For decades, many shoppers were still burdened by boxes, like this woman on Christmas Eve back in 1946. But by the mid-1950s, bags with handles had hit the mainstream, as large department stores started handing them out. This is fireproof? Fireproof door. To someone who'd say, this seems crazy, what would you say? It's not really that crazy. There is history to be preserved. There is a story that can be told. And let's face it, today the bag has become more of a moving billboard. Take Bloomingdale's. For years, its name never appeared on the bag. But Jack Ruska says they'd never dream of that today. Still, he insists, it is more than just marketing. They're portable art, they're a moment of art, but they are definitely art. And so for free, you get a piece of art. A piece of art with a purpose.